your kind participation in today's uh, GSDS uh, weekly forum. It gives me but a thinker passionately committed to freedom when the whole world was obsessed with the idea of conservative nationalism. Tagore posed the idea of universal humanism based on cooperation, region, truth, quest for knowledge and freedom. We have with us a deep scholar who has a kind of authority on Tagore's philosophy and thought, Dr. Asa Mukherjee. is from Santi Niketan institution nurtured by Rabindranath Tagore. He has actively been writing on many issues, philosophy, the ethics, women's studies, she has been teaching philosophy at Vishwabharati since 1981. We know he, her work from a deep writings or her continuous engagement with the philosophy of Tagore, Daya Krishna and whole Indian traditions. So we invite her to share her presentation and then we'll invite respected chair and discuss it. So Professor Asa Mukherjee, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, Professor, uh, Dr. Ranveer Gautam. And I'm really delighted uh, to be amongst all of you, uh, especially at the GSDS uh, weekly dialogue forum, which has been sort of bringing the dialogue among the people from all over the world. And I suppose it's playing a very, very important role, uh, especially in last two years or so. So I congratulate Randhirji and also Anantaji for uh, having this uh, forum. I also uh, am delighted to see Professor Meera Chakwarti, an old friend of mine, and uh, Professor Anand, and many others who have been part of this uh, forum and who are today with us online. And uh, hopefully some friends will also be joining soon. Uh, I can't see who are online right now, but I suppose we'll have a number of people who will be joining. So with these few words, uh, let me first of all say that, uh, uh, and uh, with uh, humility, let me present myself with whatever little I know about Tagore. I'm really not a Tagore scholar in the, the recognized sense. I've been writing on Tagore. I've been living here for the last 40 years. And whatever I have absorbed his, you know, as, his, as his thought and his philosophy, living in Shantiri Ketan, that's actually the, what I'm going to sort of share with you uh, with my own limitations. I mean, I have learned Bengali after coming here. So Bengali is not my mother tongue. Uh, Professor Meera Chakravarti knows this. And uh, but uh, with my limitations of language, Whatever little I have learned, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever uh, sort of familiarity of the literature, because he has written so much. It's a huge amount of literature. I mean, uh, I think that for a person like Rabindranath Tagore, uh, I, I have no idea how he could write so much and publish so much. I mean, half of the literature is not translated even today uh, from Bengali. So. You know, I mean, one life is not enough to read Tagore. Uh, you need at least three, four write, uh, lives just to read Tagore. Forget about writing. So with these few words, let me start 
uh, uh, my sort of little bit uh, sort of uh, contemplation on his idea of freedom, uh, which actually is the foundation, as Randhiji has uh, very rightly said. Uh, so, so Tagore's idea of freedom, uh, truly speaking, is quite complex. That evolves through his lifelong writing, starting as, at an early age of 14. For the sake of simplicity, we will. Why I'm saying so, I'll come to that later. For the sake of simplicity, we may divide his idea of freedom as political freedom in the context of nation state divide and nationalism, uh, social freedom as interdependence, human freedom as creativity, and freedom as breaking the boundaries of all kinds, including the self and the body. So basically, I'm dividing the, uh, his concept of uh, his idea of freedom into four parts. But that doesn't mean that actually they are not interrelated. They are actually overlapping with each other. But, but to understand, perhaps uh, it's better that we focus on these four uh, forms. So there could be many more, actually. But uh, yeah, basically, I'm dividing them into four. So the first is uh, political freedom. Second is social freedom. The third is human freedom as creativity. And the fourth one, to repeat, is freedom as breaking the boundaries of all kinds, including the self and the body, which we call moksha or mukti or whatever. So at the end, uh, for Tagore, these are various levels leading to one unity. Now, these various levels, I mean, they, they, they're, this is not a hierarchical level. I mean, let, let me say that these are not hierarchical. I mean, these are levels, but yeah, they are in a way parallel. So they are not hierarchical. So these are, uh, but then they all lead to one unity. Uh, in this lecture, I will focus mostly on his essays and philosophical writings, rather on his literary works like poems, plays, songs, etc. Because my training in philosophy actually is uh, helping me to, uh, to to discuss his idea of freedom from philosophical point of view, rather than poetic and literary point of view. I mean. Uh, of course, I will bring some references of his literary writings also uh, within this context. So uh, the first kind of freedom which I have talked about, political freedom in the context of nation state, divide and nationalism. Tagore at a very early age realized the problem with the history of India. So when he is talking, uh, basically, you know, I mean, uh, his, his notion of history of India that he develops right from his childhood and while writing on the history of India, Tagore was very much influenced by the views of Raja Ram Mohan Rai, Bankim Chandra, and Dujint Nath Tagore, his own elder brother. Before them, there was no history of India, written by Indian authors. Mostly, it was either Parsi, Arabic, British, or some foreigner, basically non-Indian. Uh, that in Tagore's view was not the true history of India. So this is actually where he breaks right from the, the written history of India, which was presented. The true history of India, in his view, started taking shape from his early writings around 1880. So he was born in 1861. So around 1880 onwards, uh, such uh, writings as Bharat Borshir Tihash, um, you know, he started writing. And Bharat Porsche, the Tihash Dhara, another article. Uh, then you have Atma Shakti. I'll be talking uh, about each one of them a little later. Swadeshi Samaj. So these are the titles of his writings which I'm referring to. Nation Key. What is nation? Nationalism. Uh, his collection of essays, I'm sure most of you have, must have seen as nationalism. Actually, they, they, they are the collection. Uh, these are the essays which he has written at different times, but then they are put together. Sadhana, uh, which I think is a basic philosophical book, uh, and reaches its culmination in religion of man, which is also the greatest uh, uh, human, uh, I mean, the philosophical work that God has sort of uh, uh, written in the recent history. And uh, which was actually the Hilbert lectures, which he has presented uh, in various uh, uh, places. So I'll be focusing mainly on these uh, these literary uh, uh, works, I mean the, the, the essays and writings of uh, Tagore. 
So history of a country normally seen as the history of the rulers as political history. Now this is what we understand by history normally. So it's the history of rulers as a political history. But history of India is not simply a history of rulers. It is based on natural regulation of human relationship. And this is the breaking point for Tibor. So that men can develop ideals of life in cooperation with one another. It has also a political side, no doubt. Of course, there will be some ruler. So this is a political side. But that is for self-preservation. Indian society. Now you can see that he is actually, you know, uh, defining Indian history, going to the notion of society. Indian society was based on cooperation and the spirit of reconciliation between different opposing forces to form a harmonious whole. So if you really want to look at the history of India, then Indian society, we have to look at the structure of the society. And society is a kind of, uh, uh, which actually is mostly in the villages, uh, uh, is a kind of harmonious whole. Uh, over centuries, hordes of, uh, uh, hordes of Mughals and Pathans have invaded India. That we all know about that. But we knew them as human races coming with their religion and customs and never known them as nations. So it, we had invaders, but basically like uh, uh, Mughals and Pathans, so they came with their own culture, their own religion. But they were, we have not known them as invaders, uh, but I mean, they, they came as a, uh, in, uh, as a human race and coming with their own religion and customs. But Tagore makes the distinction between the Aryan race and non-Aryan Aryan race. The foreign rule for centuries by Turkish sultans, then the Mughals, and finally by the British were not the same. So he makes a distinction here that all these people, I mean, Mohammedans and Turkish uh, sultans who actually ruled India, their ruling and British ruling, they were very different in nature. To interpret India's past, we must go deep into India's history and the political past that has been misinterpreted again and again. So Tagore, taking the clue from Raja Ram Mohan Rai and Bakim Chandra and Tujendra Tagore, he develops this, these ideas. So uh, these three people, basically, and there, there could be more who were actually you know, uh, having this uh, basic idea that Indian history has to be written in a by the Indians and it should be, it should be true history. So till I mean before them there was no true history of India. So Tagore has written a different aspect of Indian history, the ethos of Indian culture. So he actually uh, brings the ethos of Indian culture since time immemorial as he viewed it had never been conquest. So these invaders, uh, invaders who came, they had the, the intention of conquesting. But India had never had the spirit of conquest of foreign land. And there lies the whole difference. India had always sheltered all covers. So anybody who was coming, they were welcomed. I mean, they were actually sheltered. They were given the shelter. Uh, not that the invaders were uh, welcome. But, you know, once they have come, you know, we actually uh, sort of, you know, gave them shelter. Uh, so, it was like a narrow nationalism. Now, from this, as you can see, that, you know, he's a cultural past of India. So the, the, the nationalism, which is based on national state, uh, narrow nationalism, as we call it. Uh, so uh, he was against that. And he he was in favor of Swadeshi Samra, uh, Samaj. Now, what is this Swadeshi Samraj? I might go a little later. Based on Atma Shakti. Now, Atma Shakti is uh, the kind of the strength of the soul of the human being. So this is what uh, his article, actually, Atma Shakti, has all this uh, uh, details about it. Nationality, according to Tagore, was a great menace. So, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, na yeah, uh, nationalism and nationality is, was a great menace. So 
so i'm to- quoting tagor is a great man is uh, this actually was uh, is from his article uh, article in nationalism in 1917 for him nationalism was an imported western category that was not based on any social cooperation but on the spirit of conflict and conquest so on the one hand we have nationalism which is on the spirit of co- spirit of conflict and conquest on the other we have uh, uh, atma shakti we have uh, uh, swadeshi sam- samaj which is on the spirit of the cooperation and uh, and uh, uh, harmony so he was against imperialism and also of nationalism and worked for cosmopolitan internationalism so uh, i mean he makes this distinction and uh, on the basis of, we'll see that later that how he moves from nationalism or uh, from the the uh, the kind of nationalism which he which is uh, he is uh, proposing is a kind of internationalism or which can be called as cosmopolitan internationalism tagore distinguishes between state and society as we have seen now what is state uh, uh, state is an expression of greed and aggression and lust for power uh, society as such has no ulterior purpose through colonialism the british came as a nation so british uh, uh, came as a nation uh because they they were actually came with power and they wanted to, they had greed uh, and they wanted to have the uh, british they wanted to came as a nation to us who are who are no nation ourselves so india was not a nation but britishers came as a nation what is nation a nation is a sense of political and economic union of people so it's a political and economic union which which defines a nation is that aspect which a whole population assumes when organized for a mechanical purpose so they have a mechanical purpose uh, which is based on economic and political power and therefore uh, they form a nation in the early days it had its separate place in society restricted to professionals but real nature of a nation with the help of science and perfecting of the organization will this power begin to grow so with the use of science this power became growing and brings in the harvest of the wealth crosses its boundary with amazing rapidity it goads its neighboring societies with greed and material prosperity natural uh, sorry mutual jealousy became uh, because of each other's growth into the powerfulness takes over soon it can stop no longer for the competition grows keener organizations grows faster self self freshness at, uh, attains supremacy trading upon greed and fear of man it occupies more and more space in society to to become its ruler force so this is what is nation and this is based on the notion of state thus nation becomes synonymous with organizations of politics and commerce when this engine attains vast size and who are mechanics uh, who are mechanics are made into parts of the machine then the personal man is eliminated into plate uh, phantom so the personal man loses its identity everything becomes a revolution of policy carried out by human parts requires no twinge of pity or moral responsibility european war of nations is the war of retribution each country is casting its net into the, the slimy bottom of the other fishing for their secrets the treacherous treacherous secret brewing in the oozy depths of diplomacy each nation has his history of its lies now notice the words each nation has a history of its lies and broken faith international suspicion and jealousy rose to the level of the highest degree so this is the kind of criticism which he is actually presenting of nationalism and of course uh, as you know i mean he has seen the first world war and we will see i mean how he reacts to japan and china and uh, uh, you know when they participate in this so tagore suggests as an uh, suggests an alternative way to get back to man the concept of man man in his natural surroundings the fullness of his communal life 
Now notice he's talking about social and communal life with all his living associations can save the civilizations. Now this kind of uh, you know nation state based on this uh, greed uh, uh, and uh, power, uh, he is actually proposing another alternative. So if a man actually uh, uh, who is living who is having uh, living in a natural surrounding fulfills uh, with fullness uh, can with his communal life can have the association uh, of the civil civilizations. So comes the question of the con concept of man and community. Tagore conceived man as surplus. It discloses itself through creation of harmony among the different contradictory aspects of life. So, I mean, whatever contradictions we find in life, we can, by creativity, we can find a harmony into, uh, into the world. For men, the world is not simply given, it is creation. So the, the nature, surrounding, everything is a creation. So it's not given. Uh, this, this he's writing in, in 1903. While creating the world, it is endlessly creating itself. So man creates the world, he finds himself in creation, he also creates the world, and by in, in creating the world, there's a, there's a kind of endless process through which he goes. Now, this creation has no ulterior purpose. Tagore started thinking about community of which Indian village community is the model. So for him, Indian village community is the model, ideal. Uh, in the community, a bond formed out of surplus and mutual relations rests on humidity with those who have lived in uh, villages, they they would be uh, they will agree with Tagore that uh, uh, what what he is talking about even today is true. It is not really a relation of commerce; hence, kinship is a relation of atma shakti. So, kinship relation uh, kinship is the relation of atma shakti, the strength of the soul. Any problem, the race problem, or the problem of caste, must be solved on the basis on the basis of this relation kinship relationship uh, and helping each other. So society is a conglomeration of the communities and hence cannot have any ulterior purpose apart from pursuing the human ideal. The guidance, uh, guiding theme should be harmony. Otherwise, the solution would be an illusion. So here, the principle of harmony is the basic thing, which actually is the guiding principle. Therefore, he's suggesting that all the problems of uh, caste, problems of uh, 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 gender, problems of any kind of discrimination, they have to be solved in relation to. So it's in their relating, relative connectedness that all these problems can be solved within a community. Tagore advocated for Swadeshi sam uh, Samaj, as we have said in a constructive way by arguing that Indian should be, uh, Indians should utilize their energies in constructive efforts such as spreading education and social reforms rather than destructive activities such as burning British goods. As you know, I mean, Gandhi actually suggested that you burn the British goods. Such destructive attitude uh, did not make, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't have really time to go into the, this thing, but if, if things come, in, come up in the discussion, perhaps we can take up. Such a destructive attitude did not make much sense, either in the terms of economic gain or in terms of nationalism or as a social commitment. Tagore was more sympathetic to the modern technology and was in favor of assimilating the best of the West. So the best of the West and the best of the East. That's what he was proposing. Uh, he was uh, looking forward uh, as to create a self-reliant country, but that would ultimately be able to dispense with its dependence to alien rule. So self-reliant country, which is Swadeshi uh, Samaj, would be the, the, the ideal for uh, Tagore. And actually, a, a, in a novel, uh, which is called Ghari Bairi, uh, quite of, uh, I mean, uh, you must be familiar with, uh, uh, which was written in 1919, uh, deals with these issues. For Tagore, the Western ideas, particularly science, were vital for Indian development. Though he was critical of the use of the machines like Gandhi, he 
sympathized with the rational spirit behind the development of science of the west they got wanted indians to modernize their farming techniques and with this intention he started the rural reconstruction program at chinegetan indians must take the best of the west and assimilate it with the best of india tagore argued that the political history of the west is actually a history of nation state as we have already discussed and so history of greed aggression and therefore must be self defeating the history of the west the political history of the, depending on the nation state that has to be self defeating he rejected the notion of the rational self interested individual arguing that human beings are connected in fundamental ways in the universe he argues against the political freedom that involves individual freedom rights and individual dignity in the view i mean as you know uh, most of the libertarians have talked about uh, 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 the love for democracy that uh, uh, the individual dignity has to be respected now in this view all these lead to territorial fragmentation so tegor is against about all this and he says that these will lead to territorial fragmentations they will divide into the nation state in a very sarcastic way he presents the situation in his play tashir desh so uh, it's a very famous play uh, where he actually in a, a very sarcastic way presents this and the song that is very famous is amra shawai raja amader ei rajar rajatte naile modir rajar shange milbesh ki shotte amra shawai raja uh basically uh, in this song uh, which is actually uh, uh, you know uh, sarcastically presented we as human beings are born with choices that's what he accepts uh, but then as we have said that you know uh, it's a creation uh, we, we are born in within the creation with choices but once we are created with choices we have to make correct choices now that's where where he is actually you know uh, sort of emphasizing that we have choices man is basically free just like immanuel kant you know so ma- man has to be defined as a free being free rational being but then we have to make correct choices to unite with the creator the king so the correct choice is the to do those actions which will unite with the creator the small king i mean the amra shawai raja here everyone every individual is the small king all right and the creator the big creator is the big king so the small king united the creator king human being in the universe he writes the nation of the west forges its iron chain of organization which are the most relentless and unbreakable that have ever been manufactured not not merely for the subject races but you who live under the delusion that you are free are everywhere sacrificing your freedom and humanity to the fetish nationalism uh, this uh, from his uh, nationalism essay so uh, western nationalism as you have said that you know he criticized we indians must remember that we are individuals with living sensibilities we are individuals with living sensibilities we must remember that the spirit of conflict and conquest as we have talked about is at the origin and the center of western nationalism while talking of japan india and china tagore says that eastern asia has followed its own path which are not political so not only india but also he is talking about japan and china they have not followed the political path but social not predatory and machinery efficient but spiritual and based upon the varied and deeper relations of humanity so i mean he's talking about uh, uh, the east actually not only india so for tagore there is no dichotomy between self interest and duty towards others now this is notable which we'll we'll take up a little later his concept of freedom is based on understanding the ties the ties are natural social family ties and instead of pursuing self interest so the ties are very important for him 
the connectedness is very important for him. And uh, instead of pursuing self-interest based on libertarian idealism and uh, dignity and human rights. Now, uh, let me come to social freedom, which we have talked about in the beginning. Tagore's lifelong writings can be expressed in home and the world, Ghare and Vaire, as denoting three overlapping but distinct levels of society, the domestic sphere versus public sphere, the community versus largest society, and the nation state versus the rest of the world. So actually, we have talked about nation state and rest of the world right, just now. All these intersecting levels create insider and outsider. So with these kind of three levels, we find insider and outsider, me and the other one, me and the other. So each level, uh, these levels uh, uh, actually uh, have boundaries, are constructed to create freedom for some at the cost of excluding some others. So, I mean, if my freedom starts where uh, uh, the freedom of other, uh, I, uh, sorry, my freedom stops where the freedom of others starts. So uh, that's the kind of thing which he's talking about. So, the, I mean, uh, the freedom of mine excludes some others. He attempted, uh, he attempted in the, uh, uh, to contest all kinds of dichotomies, boundaries in order to create harmony and connectedness, similar to the personal is political. I mean, those who are familiar with this dichotomy, a personal is political in the context of uh, gender studies. There's another sense of freedom, obligation. So there's an obligation towards the other which is tied with the freedom of the individual. Uh, in a society, one lives in a relationship with others. One cannot have freedom by disassociating oneself from his fellow being, as all ties of relations, relationship demand obligation on others. Now this, I suppose, one can understand very clearly that uh, my obligation uh, is, uh, I mean, if I'm uh, part of the family, then of course I have uh, uh, obligations towards my family. Uh, I mean, so family ties are best example to understand this. Tagore argues that in human world, only a perfect arrangement of interdependence gives rise to freedom. So even with a, with a small context like family, uh, 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 I mean, like the cooperation and interdependence can only lead to freedom, uh, which may sound paradoxical, but it is true. Freedom is only possible for those who have the power to cultivate mutual understanding and cooperation. The history of growth of freedom is the history of the perfection of human relationships, says Tagore. Uh, uh, all broken truths are evils, and death does not death does not hurt us, but disease does. Note this, uh, you know, very very deep uh, kind of uh, uh, expression. Death does not hurt us because once somebody dies, then, you know, there's nothing to hurt there, you know, I mean, there's no hurt to the person, but disease does. But when we become sick, then it hurts us because disease constantly reminds us of health and yet withholds it from us. So disease actually reminds us of health and withholds it from us. Uh, this is from religion of man. Freedom is the invert process of losing oneself that leads to it. Talking about the Baal sect, where they emphasize on the eternal bond of union between the infinite and the finite soul, which leads to mukti through love, which is the ultimate, and it is this interrelation which makes truth complete. Absolute independence or absolute freedom is blankness. This cannot be truth, and rather it is the interdependence which leads to freedom. So for Tagore, it is the interdependence which leads to freedom and not uh, the, the absolute freedom which some people have talked about in the West. Uh, not even, uh, I mean, I'll come to that uh, different kind of meaning of freedom a little later, but this is uh, the kind of interconnectedness of, uh, 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 of freedom which he, uh, Tagore is talking right now. Man finds his freedom in nature by being able to love it. So other kind of uh, connectedness we find in nature. For love is freedom. It gives us that fullness of existence, which saves us from paying with our soul 
for objects that are immensely cheap. Luxury is an evil, and so is ascetism. One is demon. See, for him, ascetism is also evil, and luxury is also evil. Because ascetism, you 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 don't uh, you you don't have comfort, enough comfort. You you are uh, you are somehow you know going through all sorts of pain. So that's also evil, and luxury is also evil. One is a demon of the desert, and another is demon of the jungle. <laughs> the school in Shantini Ketan is an attempt. So I mean, simplicity is the ideal for him. All right. So the simple life is uh, uh, not luxury. But simple life, uh, with enough uh, uh, kind of comfort. So, a school in Shanti Ketan is attempt to develop in children the freshness of their feelings of nature, a sensitiveness of soul in their relationship with their human surroundings, with the help of literature, festive ceremonies, religious teachings, which enjoins us to come to the nearer presence of the world through the soul by bringing out its music. So this is how he is actually thinking of uh, bringing uh, uh, the, the the harmony uh, within uh, uh, within uh, the nature and the human. So principle of harmony is the vital concept in Tagore's thought. At the first level, the harmony of relationship includes natural with nature and human with human society. Tagore mentions his own longings to run away from uh, when he was young, as most of you know about. Uh, from his own self and be one with everything in nature, and he claims that this appears to be particularly Indian, the outcome of a traditional desire for the expansion of the consciousness. But this also grants that such a desire is too subjective in character. There are factors which may disturb the harmony between the spirit of the individual man and the spirit of the universal man, and we give the name sin. Uh, in su in such situation, uh, our true freedom in the realm of matter, mind, and spirit is made narrow or distorted. Being conscious of self invokes it. Uh, being conscious of one's own individuality, of our finite and individual nature, but in our soul or spiritual self, we are conscious of the transcendental truth. Within us, the universal supreme man, its enjoyment is in the reunion of the individual self with the sake for the universal. Supreme man is its enjoyment is the renunciation of the individual self for the sake of universal. This renunciation is not the negation of the self, but in the dedication of it. The aim is the realization of its unity in the objective ideal of perfection. And some harmony of relationship between the individual and the infinite man. Unity lies in this harmony of relationship, and not in the barren isolation that some interpreters of the Upanishads have claimed uh, when the truth is revealed. So the concept of moksha, for example, you know, which uh, most of these Upanishads and uh, in Hindu uh, tradition uh, is emphasized, uh, that unity. That moksha uh, is not what he's uh, he's uh, advocating for, because that is in barren isolation, uh, and uh, this kind of uh, truth is not revealed. I mean, uh, I mean, very often we, they say, you know, like sadhu tapasya and all these things, you know, sitting in alone in the hill at top of uh, uh, you know hill or the forest. Uh, so the truth is not revealed there. It's a it's a Kind of, it has to come from within. For Tagore, the truth is not revealed, but one stands face to face with it and experiences directly. So the the individual is facing the universal uh, uh, face, facing the universal and experiencing it directly. That's that's the unity is. Now the other kind of uh, uh, freedom which I have talked about is creativity. Connectivity and creativity. There are three ways in which we relate the world, according to Tagore: connection of the intellect, connection of the need, and the connection of joy. So these are three kind of connectivity which he is talking about. The first lies in the ways a scientist relates to the material world. Uh, relation, I mean, the connectivity of uh, the 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 
intellect is uh, the way uh, the scientist does. It relates to the material world in the understanding, as we have done for uh, uh, this uh, uh, reaching to the moon. Material world in the understanding and discovering of laws and myst mysteries of nature. In doing so, it realizes itself. So this is the first kind of connection. The second is the self relates uh, in needs of others. So self relates with in need of others. When self-interest motivates our connection with the world, we do know and understand ourselves and others more and more. Yet the barrier remains. But uh, uh, in, there is no doubt that there are no questions. It's a direct experience. So when, uh, when we realize the need of the other, and uh, we also realize our experience of our own needs, then also we are connecting with other. And this is also a direct experience. The joy lies in self-giving. There's no self-interest. Uh, but then when somebody needs something, and when you give something, when you uh, 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 give some alms to, uh, to a beggar, then you get some joy. The joy lies in self-giving. So it, whatever little you can give, you know, that gives you joy. That is no self-interest. We cannot realize ourselves without some uh, form of self-giving and relating to others. On our own, we remain restricted and unfulfilled. Now, left to ourselves, we are always restricted and we are also unfulfilled. But in uh, uh, giving others, uh, it's the self-fulfilling. The, uh, the sole purpose of a tenant is to know others and give ourselves to them. Without that, we cannot reach the truth of our being, our human condition. Tagore, by extending the limits of the traditional Vedantinism framework, that sees self being content in and itself. Now, in Vedanta's tradition, uh, self is always uh, swayambhu, and uh, it's always self-content uh, in itself, and aspects of reality of the phenomenal world as essential for self-completion. The great souls need to do work for others. Now, Tagore is talking about uh, service to others uh, and uh, to do work for others. Tagore considers knowing oneself through the among, through and among others as the dharma or categorical imperative of our times. Uh, rela relationality in both ethical and aesthetic positions. So he's talking, he's suggesting a kind of relationality in both ethical and aesthetic positions. So connectivity and relationality is in aesthetics through love, through so creativity, and also through the ethical uh, kind of dharma by giving and helping other people. The self being content in and of itself, which is uh, 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 basically the Gita's message, Bhagavad Gita's message, considering phenomenal world as essential for self-realization. We cannot shut ourselves, but have to know uh, ourselves through and among others as our prime dharma. Self-interest is not the highest way of relating to others. So in the case of relation of the intellect to the world, but in creativity, joy, beauty, and the relation is of a different kind. The former is calculating. When it's a matter of self-interest, then of course, a uh, concept of, uh, I mean, when you have the need, the intellect, then it's a uh, calculating. The later is the giving and liberating. The relationship of joy, with the world is uh, uh, the relationship of joy with the world is an outcome of the soul's deep involvement in fullness. He says, the heart seeking to express itself, the world is full of enjoyment, relish, and beauty, which is transmitted into its own creativity, creative self giving that takes the form of literature or art. So uh, thus, we even at the risk of all practical value, participate in joyous sacrifice of life. Our heart's deepest urge can only be realized in its meaning, uh, in, uh, in its meeting the outside world in an act of self-giving through which it finds its self-expression and fulfillment. Tagore says, now, this is a wonderful example, which I suppose, you know, you all enjoy. I mean, how the self-giving takes place in nature. 
Tagore says, to quote, the flower we see in is in no hurry to become seed. Flower becomes seed once the, the, the flower uh, becomes old, it becomes seed. But there's no hurry for it. It transcends its needs and blooms beautifully. The clouds do not rush off after raining. They languorously and needlessly catch our eyes with their colors. At one court. The trees do not stick like spread in their arms outward as beggars for the light and shower, but green tickets of leaves will uh, fill the horizon with their bounty. The sea, we notice, is not an immense office that transports water, and the mountains not only feed water to the river of the earth, but like Rudra, deep in yoga, still the fears of those who cross the skies, then we find the Hridaya Dharma. So he's talking about the purpose of the heart, heart of the world. Then ever wised, uh, wizened, wizened uh, intellect asks why this careless expenditure is needless efforts. The ever young heart answers, just because it f pleases me. So it's only, it has no purpose. It is only because it pleases me. I see no other reason. So uh, uh, in that sense, you know, art is an enjoyment. It pleases and it can be shared with everyone across humanity, shareability of art and the universe. That's what he's talking about. Uh, so thus the act of self-giving of heart finds its joyous self-expression in the world realizing itself in the process of relating to others through uncalculating relish. So he's talking about uncalculating relish. The microcosm and the micro, uh, microcosm and, micro, uh, and macrocosm are harmonized. Their oneness is reestablished through beauty and bliss all over the world. Thus literature is not expression of individuals' creativity. Instead, it is the articulation of the universal man. He talks about Vishwamana, uh, universal man. Essence of human nature, as found in all ages and all people in the world, the deepest expression, writers being as being of all men, uh, writing express the pain of every man. For Tagore, world literature is the, is the way in which the soul of man expresses its joy through the written word, uh, words and the forms which he chooses to give to his eternal being. So uh, actually he has an article which is uh, called World Literature, Vishu Shahito. So that's what he's uh, uh, emphasizing on. Um, having said that, uh, now let me, because time is, how much time do I have, Randi? Uh, you have five minutes, five to seven minutes. Hello? Yes, you have five to seven minutes. Yes, Miradi, can you tell me how much time do I have? Yes, Another yes, ten five minutes? to seven minutes. Okay. Five minutes, you have five okay. to seven minutes. Okay. okay. So Tagore, while talking about different kinds of truth, emphasizes that the truth in science and logic is not independent of human consciousness. OK. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Uh, I think there is network issue. So. Uh, we are trying to connect her. Uh, meanwhile, uh, we can invite uh, Professor Jain Singh Tomarji. Uh, Professor Jain Singh Tomarji has a discussion in the discussion. So, we have to ask that he will give his time. Uh, Randir Ji, I think we are listening to the whole Professor Asha Mukherjee. After that, हम लोग अपनी बात संक्षेप में कहते तो शायद ज्यादा अच्छा रहता 
लेकिन ठीक है कोशिश कर रहा हूँ उनसे हाँ शायद वो कनेक्ट हो गई हैं कोशिश हेलो स्क्रीन पर तो आ, दिख रहा है उनका नाम हाँ जी हेलो यस यस यू आर ऑडिबल मैडम प्लीज ओके there was some problem i suppose of the internet okay so uh, since the time is short maybe i'll uh, go to the next uh, i mean the last uh, kind of uh, freedom which i was talking about freedom as breaking the boundaries of all kinds including the self and the body an individual finds his uh, uh, meaning is fundamental reality comprehending all individuals as we have said already the reality which is the moral and spiritual basis of the realm of human values this belongs to our religion in as science is liberation of our knowledge in the universal reason uh, which cannot be other than reason religion is the liberation of our individual personality in the universal person who cannot be other than human so uh, uh, i mean as you know the title of the book itself is uh, uh, the uh, religion of man so uh, being human is uh, being having the religion perfection has two aspects in man which can be separated as perfection in being and perfection in doing so this is actually per- fundamental uh, uh, point which is making that uh, you can have two kind of perfection which are which is perfection in being and perfection in doing uh, so the perfection of doing is uh, uh, in the empirical world uh, is doing is uh, perfection of doing is a question of moral perfection when an individual should be true in his goodness so doing all good things whatever is desirable doing all that is uh, is a perfection in doing the inner perfection of his personality is valuable as spiritual freedom and for humanity the goodness requires detachment of our spirit from egoism and we need to identify ourselves with universal humanity it is not the uh, benef- it's not benef- it's not only beneficial for our fellow beings but it is valuable as truth itself through which we realize within us that man is not merely animal bound by his individual passions and appetites but a spirit that has its unflattered perfection goodness is the freedom of ourselves in the world of man as is love uh, tagore is pleading for spiritual perfection as opposed to mechanical perfection as we have already talked about in order to uh, realize this unity with the universal the individual must live his perfect life which alone give him the freedom to transcend it we know that nothing lasts forever uh, and it also true that all our moral relations have have their end but we cannot ignore bonds that are real even when they are temporary referring to precious and the parables of two birds uh, sitting on the same bow one of which feeds the uh, and the other looks on he explains the relationship of finite being and the infinite being in man so this example is extremely uh, important to understand this that uh, uh, a bird which is actually feeding and the bird which is looks on uh, one is uh, uh, sort of you know uh, based on uh, one's needs looking after the needs of uh, 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 of others and the other one is uh, for enjoyment for uh, sort of transcending so these two birds uh, 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 are the uh, kind of tendencies which human being has and he is of the opinion that uh, the delight of the bird which looks on is great for it is pure and free, free delight there are both of these birds in man himself the objective one uh, with its business of life the subjective one with the disinterested joy of vision so on the one hand Uh, it has business side of life and the other hand there is a disinterested joy in business so this is the kind of 
uh, truth Tagore is talking about. The meaning of transcendence of freedom in Tagore is breaking through the shells of one's limitations. Now, this is exactly exactly the 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 ultimate I and mean, the uh, the real meaning of freedom for him. So, the transcendence, the freedom, uh, the free transcendence of freedom in Tagore is breaking through the shells of one's limitations. Whatever limitations one has, if one can break those uh, limitations and can uh, flourish. So this shell of one's limitation is at two levels, one on the individual level and one other one is on the deeper level. At the deeper level, man's pursuit to achieve truth goes beyond his peaks. This proves to him his infinity and makes his religion real to him by his own manifestations in truth and goodness. So this is exactly what he's talking about, the freedom. Uh, and this is the cul culmination of uh, all forms of freedom. When a child is detached from the mothers, uh, and this again, I, I, he explains uh, from an example, when a child is detached from his mother's womb and it finds his mother in a real relationship with truth is in freedom. Man in his detachment has realized himself is a wider, deeper relationship with the universe. In this moral life, he has the sense of obligation and his freedom uh, at the same time. And this is goodness. His spatial life, spiritual life, uh, in his this sense of union and will, which is free, uh, which is continuation of in love. The freedom of opportunity he wins for himself in the nature region by uniting his power with the nature forces. So uh, all this kind of freedom he's talking about. Now, uh, I mean, for him, it's a life fulfillment, life of fulfillment. So what is life of fulfillment? It is our freedom in truth. Lead us from unreal to reality. Satyam is anandam, the real is joy. Freedom from ego to reach to that disinterested joy, which is the source and goal of creation. Its freedom is the unity of truth, Satyam, Shivam, and Sundram. Now, with this uh, kind of uh, uh, framework, uh, he also explains the union. What is the union? Explaining how the union takes place, he, ref he refers to the meaning of yoga to reflect, uh, to effect union. Union has its significance not in the realm of to have, but to be. So the union is not to have something. I mean, uh, moksha is not something which has to be achieved, but it is to be. To say that uh, 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 man achieve, achieves truth is to admit that man is separate from the truth. But to be true is to become one with truth. Some religions which emphasize the, uh, some religions which emphasize the relation of man with God also reason to pursue the prescribed path to be one with the Narayana, the union, the supreme reality of man, which is divine. Our use of mind cannot lead us to union with the spirit. It involves transcending the limits of mind. Once we transcend the limits of mind, our inner self is filled with joy, which indicates through uh, such freedom, we come into touch with the reality that is an end in itself and therefore is bliss. So there's no end, actually. You know, there's, there's no purpose. Tagore talks about the limits of power, love, enjoyment, and approaching the universal God or the Isha, the super soul, by transcending these limits. In Ishopanishad, it is said, find out thy enjoyment in re reunion, never convince, uh, co coveting that it belongs to others. In Gitanjali, Tagore says, to quote, I feel the embrace of freedom in a thousands of bound, bo bonds of delight. Tagore had inbuilt antipathy for cages for the spirit. His young mind could not fit in any group or institution when it was educational, religious, or political, and his mature mind could not fit in any school of philosophy of religion. Now that's what I mean. He he actually crossed all sort of kind of boundaries and he came out of it. He founded a school and university, which you all know, uh, where one could be free from such groups. Or Tagore, for Tagore, religion and secular are not separate. In poetry, music, art, and the life they live are one, and there's no dividing line. In religion of man, Tagore puts his faith in the right thinking people he has met around the world in nearly two decades of traveling. Tagore's mukti is not that of a monk who does sadhana or tapasya in a forest. 
or in the top of a hill sitting in isolation but he talks of mukti that belongs to this empirical shared world amar mukti aloy aloy ei akashe amar mukti dhuloy dhuloy ghase ghase sarvajoner majhe sarvajoner moner majhe dukkho bipad tuchcho karo kothin kaaje jibon jibon jeno diye ahuti mukti ashe so the mukti comes only by self sacrifice self self giving so that's the kind of mukti he is talking about thank you so much for the patience thank you thank you thank you so much uh, uh, professor meera chakravarti madam it was really very very enriching and very insightful session and you have very rightly mentioned that political freedom does not give us freedom when our mind this is what professor uh, ravindranath tagore invokes today i was reading a kind of uh, remembrance of meera bahan jab meera bahan kehti hai gandhi tapasya ke devta hai aur tagore anand ke devta hai to anand well beingness aur freedom ka kya सकता है उसके बीच के रचनात्मकता का जो आयाम है वो सेल्फ सोसाइटी कल्चर हारमोनी पीस और जस्टिस के माध्यम से गुजरता है तो हम आदरणीय जयंत सिंह तोमर जी से निवेदन करेंगे कि वो अपना वक्तव्य दें जयंत सिंह तोमर जी शांति निकेतन से उनका बहुत गहरा रिश्ता और नाता है और रविन्द्रनाथ टैगोर के विचारों के वो साधना भी करते हैं और समझ भी रखते हैं जी आदरणीय जयंत सिंह तोमर जी जी धन्यवाद रणधीर जी एक बहुत सुंदर वक्तव्य हम सब ने सुना प्रोफेसर आशा मुखर्जी मैडम का और बहुत इतना सारगर्भित वक्तव्य था कि उसको मंत्र मुग्ध होकर हम सब सुनते रहे कई गीत याद आते रहे जैसे शुरू में उन्होंने जो रविन्द्रनाथ टैगोर की कविता उन्होंने सुनाई अंग्रेजी उसका अनुवाद था जिसका जो सार है वो ये था कि इस भारतवर्ष में हर तरह के मनुष्य आए और सब एक देह में लीन हो गए हेथा यार जो हेथा अनार जो हेथा द्राविड़ो चीन शौक हून दौल पठान मगोल एक देह होलो लीन और उसकी शुरुआत ये है कि हे मोर चित्त पुण्य तीर्थ जागोरे धीरे यही भारत महामारे सागर तीरे तो वो शायद रविन्द्रनाथ टैगोर के जिस विचार पे आज चर्चा हो रही है टैगोर्स आइडिया ऑफ फ्रीडम उसकी एक प्रतिनिधि कविता है हम सब इस देश में जो लोग टैगोर को जानते हैं उनकी कविता को ये कविता जरूर जानते हैं चित्त जिथा है भय सुनो उच्च जिथा है शीर लेकिन प्रोफेसर आशा मुखर्जी मैडम ने जितने सार गर्भित ढंग से उनके स्वदेशी समाज की चर्चा की उनकी विलेज कम्युनिटी की चर्चा की और साथ में नेचर ह्यूमन सोसाइटी इन सब पर जो चर्चा की वो अपने आप में अद्भुत था और सबसे बड़ी बात उन्होंने शासन तंत्र के संबंध में एक आदर्श शासन व्यवस्था के संदर्भ में एक गीत सुनाया जो शांति निकेतन के बच्चे गाते हैं आमरा शोबाई राजा आमा देरी राजा राजोते नोइले मुदे राजा सोने मिलबो की सोते हम अपने इस राजा के शासन में सभी राजा हैं अन्यथा अपने राजा से कैसे मिल सकते हैं तो ये आज की जो चर्चा थी निश्चित रूप से बहुत ही प्रेरक और सार्थक चर्चा रही आप सबका बहुत धन्यवाद आईटीएम यूनिवर्सिटी का जीएस डीएस ये आयोजन रणधीर जी के संयोजक तो नियमित कर रहा है ये हम सबके लिए खुशी की बात है प्रोफेसर तो आनंद कुमार साहब प्रोफेसर मीरा चक्रवर्ती मैडम पायली मुखर्जी मैडम और जो सब जुड़े हैं उन सबको बहुत साधुवाद बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर मैं आदरणीय प्रोफेसर मीरा चक्रवर्ती मैडम से निवेदन करूंगा कि वो चेयर रिमार्क दें उससे पहले वी इनवाइट डॉक्टर पायली मुखर्जी टू शेयर समिफ्लेक्शन ऑन द वेरी प्रेजेंटेशन 
between freedom and uh, the truth etc but i would like to uh, go to uh, to the basics of it i would rather uh, say well well if he's thinking of freedom in this distinct way which you have very nicely presented and what is the reason for that and so uh, uh, surmising your question i'm 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 trying to uh, reflect on that that the the study of the upanishads helped him to you know understand the complexities of colonization and further uh, made him interrogate the idea of freedom as as a construct and and the psyche of these imperial rulers was to uproot the people from their heritage and their culture uh, a, a kind of consciousness shifting mechanism which they resorted to that if they can if they can approve these people from culture they can uh, 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 break the bone of the nations or that culture and tagore realized that uh, that human beings cannot uh, be assigned to the role of mere cog in the wheel in this imperial system so in his poetry as tomar ji rightly says chitto jata bhay shunno at the end he uh, he he appeals to father uh, he calls he calls god as father he says father uh, let people uh, be released from the dreary deserts of sand of dead habits and uh, please lead them to the to, to that heaven of freedom here this yeah. epithet this is this is yeah this is uh, underlined that heaven of freedom where knowledge is free where the mind is without fear where the words come out from the depth of truth so i want to relate freedom and truth how how this has been a, a kind of a emphasis in all his writings you said you didn't touch the poetry but if you see gitanjali's poetry or in other poetry uh, where, where uh, 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 other sankalana or other kavya granthas you can find the uh, this emphasis now what is to be noted here is that why uh, that this freedom is related to the idea of truth why follow truth it's it's because it has a moral value to follow truth you just touched kant so i will just uh, emphasize on that which leads us to freedom and becomes an imperative which you also agree so i i i'm not disagreeing at all with you but i'm trying to go, go to the fundamentals of it and so he he is trying to uh, uh, negate the idea of being that is imposed by the colonial modes of thinking Uh, that these people are are slaves they have no identity they have no existence now they the we were we were non existent i mean people as such were non existent in, in the british colonial regime and so tagore situates the idea of being which is uh, discussed in the upanishads as uh, you remember you said at such a sat you you mentioned and then satyam uh, shivam sundaram you said i would put it as sat chit ananda because this chit or, or the consciousness uh, a being or existence which was negated by this imperialistic ideology is being resituated is being tra- is, is being tagore has tried to bring it back to the context and therefore the ontological uh, reality the existential reality sat from which you get satya 
but it is not the case of satya is not the opposite of mithya that is a different discussion so uh, sat satya because existence is always always real it is always there and therefore however much the british uh, might try to uh, uh, try to uh, make people uh, uh, disconnect people from existence they cannot because sat is infinite being it is always there and therefore the the uh, the mundaka upanishad says that that etat satyam that is that is the truth what is the truth that sat existence itself is the truth and and acharya shankara is trying to read uh, it my he says nobody says i don't exist na na ham smriti i don't exist there nobody says every everybody says sarvo hi pratyati they believe what aham asmiti i exist so this very existence which was which was being being kind of hijacked or be being uh, uh, destroyed uh, is is situated in in uh, with the help of uh, his his the impact that he had uh, from the upanishads and you know that how his father has coached him on on the upanishad and these are therefore whatever tagore is saying is very much uh, rooted in the upanishads i would give you those mantras also in the uh, term he says the the sages uh, sages are also called uh, in sanskrit as kavi because kavi is krantadarshi kavi kavi sees beyond time therefore this is mantreshu karmani though the, the, the karma or the action that he, they have been envisaging in this world this is tani bahuda santatani it 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 variously gets spread and tagore justifies this is from the dawn of history the poet and artist have been uh, uh infusing the colors uh, and music of their soul into the structure of existence so this and this is quoted by abu said uh, ayub in the centenary volume of uh, sahitya academy yeah, yeah. so what i am trying to say is that this existence truth freedom these uh, this this is a, a kind of a circle and which uh why he negates is i mean there are the theories of uh, freedom you have hana in addressing uh, you have isaiah berlin who is trying to talk of uh, um, uh, moksha and i mean sorry the negative and the positive freedom so you have different theories of freedom which which doesn't appeal to uh, uh, to uh, us yeah, yeah and it all naturally is so therefore the this uh, uh, starting point as as kant also as you mentioned kant i just uh, have been trying to say that he he throws the concept he 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 uh, his, his point of uh, ethics start uh, with the concept of freedom the moral agent judges that uh, he can be uh, uh, do, do a certain thing because because he is conscious that he he ought to and therefore the opposition also says that there is this uh, uh, distinction between good and 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 bad and good action and bad action the moral action and non moral action and kant almost resonate he says he is conscious that he ought to he recognizes that he is free a fact which but for moral level he he would never have done that why he recognizes it because of his moral value so this moral law which he would he would have otherwise not not uh, recognize it is so therefore in other words the practice of morality uh, forces the idea of freedom upon us uh, that is what he uh, is trying trying to say so what has uh, finally uh, come to the is that the concept of existence as truth and freedom was derived uh, uh, fr from from the uh, uh, from the upanishads to resist the colonizers uh, um, imposition of uh, dehumanizing or if you say decolonizing the, be the being the being is <laughs> i can't say be taking the being off from the uh, people <laughs> we have to form a form a, uh, this thing so he talks of this space in chitta yatha bhavishnu he said where he 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 yeah. tries to delineate uh, people yeah people from uh, that uh, uh, that space of that that space is the place, space of truth he says so therefore uh, it, it was very nice that tomar ji re in reminded me of that uh, reminded us of that so i i just, uh, I just how this is related to the truth um, and he of course uh, says that uh, i'm forgetting that line that which where he says aronne sadhana na ki tapashya sadhana she amar noy he said no that kind of moksha i doesn't don't, don't want yeah, that kind right, of tapas i right. don't want yeah ha right. i am forgetting the first part so, so she amar noy amar mone ache i remember that, that yeah, yeah that is not my kind of life 
so that that yeah. but this kind of this uh, this 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 being of the being and and the uh, and why uh, when you uh, when you were when you were uh, trying to talk about writing history this was so much uh, reminding me that it is because of these kind of uh, of of, of uh, uh, what you say deliberation or intellectual exercise in the upanishad which has inspired uh, 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 sorry uh, tagore uh, to say so you would find that satya and ahimsa are the two sides of the same coin in gandhi and you would find that satya and uh, uh, satchit and the freedom and truth and existence are the same coin of the uh, of the of the side so uh, there may be so many differences between gandhi and uh, uh, this thing but in this yeah Upon, in yeah. this point yeah they are sir. so it was delightful to have heard you and then now uh, i think because there are a lot of uh, uh, this thing in which we have no time you know yeah to vaimani bhutani jai then all that we can go on but, but uh, let us not go on like that so uh, this is what i i try to trace that situating uh, the being back to back to the beingness of it. Well, because you have also and and in being you are condemned to be free the being itself is free which you also mentioned and i it reminds me of sartre where where, where you say that uh, the being in in being and nothingness he he says you are condemned to be free so that resonates the idea so thank you so much yeah, Asha, thank, you. Anandhi, thank you thank you so much yeah <laughs> thank you so much meera the for the uh, wonderful comment uh, i mean largely i agree with you and you also agree with me as i could see but sure. basically bringing this notion of uh, uh, i mean especially the interpretation of upanishad I mean, Tagore actually is very much. I mean, he is uh, to 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 tell you the truth. I mean, my feeling is that he is basically a Vedantin, you know, and within the Vedantin framework, he is trying to reinterpret. Uh, yes. I mean, picking up some portions of uh, Upanishads, various, uh, you know, uh, uh, Isha yes. Upanishad, of course, is one of the favorite uh, Upanishad, which he is quoting again and again, yes. and you know, every, uh, yes. yeah. But then you know, I mean, he is reinterpreting and he is just picking up some parts of Upanishad, and that's yeah. because perhaps uh, Devendranath Tagore's uh, kind of influence. Uh, he, uh, as you have rightly said, you know, and he picks up uh, this thing. But interestingly, you know, he reinterprets in such a way that you know, they, it actually, you know, it's uh, the Upanishadic uh, interpretation uh, leads. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a. it's an exercise in the reformist uh, kind of movement no doubt about it you know yeah, so uh, i mean as i was yeah, exactly because he's exactly, from brahmo exactly. samaj no? <laughs> absolutely yeah. yeah yeah but he broke yeah. from Bra- brahmo samaj also also you know so he was not a brahmo samaj i mean he broke uh, uh, no, uh, 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 from the yeah basically yeah, i mean he started as a brahmo samaj yeah. yeah but you know i mean like he was very dissatisfied with brahmo samaj and their uh, kind of uh, prejudices you know so you he know, broke off from there too yeah. brahman, on the concept yeah, of brahman yeah. uh, how devendranath ramohan they have exactly it, it, exactly so exactly not, not exactly, hindu yeah. yeah not conventional hindu way of telling yeah no no so, no not uh, i mean so both yeah. were actually you know against the conventional hindu uh, uh, kind of right. traditions no doubt about it and especially right. the caste system the gender system etc you yeah. know so both of the yes. uh, i mean uh, 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 i mean they they actually wanted uh, they broke from uh, all these traditions so the interpretation yes. of human being is very, extremely important it extremely rich yes. you know i mean yes. uh, actually this universal taking the universal aspect of upanishad that's actually ah. which is actually you know focuses upon now the ah. universal aspect and uh, you know i mean even the britishers although they they are colonized but you know he actually Uh, embraces them, you know, with his universalism. Yeah. So it's not that he's against the colonized uh, colonization in that sense, you know, in the uh, colonized people rather, uh, the the human beings uh, who are colonizing. So actually, you know, I mean, he he says let's take best from the west, and he is actually willing to give the best from the east. So this is exact exactly the attitude which he is trying to do. So uh, having uh, uh, you know, I mean, sort of uh, enriched by the Western uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, scientific development, you know. Uh, so that that's why you know, I mean, he, he has the controversies with Gandhi. You know, Gandhi was yeah. uh, uh, against anything which was uh, you know coming from the uh, from the Britishers or anything by the colonized people. 
uh, even yeah. uh, when it was a matter of science. But Tagore actually welcomed the scientific developments, you know, especially for the agriculture. You know. So he started yeah. the yeah. whole school. I mean, Sriniketan was basically for the village yeah, people, you know, for the development. Yes. Exactly. So yeah. he, he introduced science, you know, I mean, uh, the Western science on the development of the scientific uh, revolution, you know. Yeah. So uh, he wanted to be benefited. The people should be benefited with this knowledge. Uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, your comments and, uh, and especially bringing uh, this uh, uh, dimension, which actually Tomarji has also uh, brought uh, to this, Jitajitu Bhai Shunno, and you know, this political freedom. Perhaps I should yeah, have mentioned yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, you. yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pail, uh, huh? Thank you. I'm very grateful to. Uh, Professor Asha Mukherjee and uh, Professor Jain Tomarji and uh, Miradi for uh, sharing so much information, knowledge, and philosophy. I have uh, nothing much to add here. We are already very late. So I'll just uh, go to one of my favorite uh, poems because I think Tagore, we could have talked of uh, like freedoms, basically. Rabindranath Tagore's idea, there are multiple uh, levels he talks about, but um, he also talks about the kind of, uh, you know, the, the the wish to see the world and, and to go around and seek knowledge. There's a very interesting um, thing he says that So he would uh, probably challenge the frontiers of the home every time he wants to communicate with the world. And that particular kind of a uh, seeking that he carried within himself is also symbolic of his urge for a very, um, you know, I would say psycho-spiritual kind of a, a freedom. And the other thing that I find extremely interesting in Tagore's idea of freedom is when he actually refers to one of his novels, um, Rajoshi, um, and talks about it. And Rajoshi is a, is a very interesting work because Tagore talks about sacrificing the most important uh, love of your own life for the sake of loving others. To be able to love a lot more people, Tagore, through Govindo Manikko, showed that there that this in a lot of uh, you know uh, I would say the, the sense of belonging to one person versus a sense of belonging to many others. And that's the reason probably, uh, you know, Oya Mukti Aloy Aloy. So it comes with this idea of a self-liberation. You're liberated from your own sense of belonging to some extent. And um, to me, that opens another beautiful dimension of Tagore. Um, with that, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak briefly. I'll be thrilled to join in such um, discussions in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much.